Uh, Senator Rochas Okorocha uh, says there isn't any need for three senators per state and that um, he also said there is no need for more than three members of the House of Representatives per state. He's saying this as a suggestion on ways to cut the cost of running government in Nigeria. Take a listen to just a sound, a short soundbite of Rochas Okorocha on that. What is the three, three senators per state doing that one senator per state cannot do? Hold it. Now, what are we doing in the National Assembly there that we have thrown as something people? And each of these person creates demand on the system. We must cut down on the cost of governance. What we need to have under the present ugly situation, which our condition points out to us, is to have a statutory representative, one per state, and senator three per federal constituency to reduce cut, cut of this thing. But what does this mean for Nigeria? Well, this comes in the backdrop of some agitations that the Nigerian National Assembly is the most expensive in the world, and there is a lot that goes into the running of government. I have joining me tonight a Nigerian author, social critic, and a former private secretary to late Obafemi Awolo, Mr. Odia Femi joins us now to, uh, tonight on the program. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. How would you react to what Senator Richard Sokorocha said? I will simply say that the cost of government is not just about the personnel, not about the number, it's about resources that are pulled from developmental purposes and applied into personalist issues concerning legislators and executives. And that it is not so much that three people are, will be considered too much for the Senate but that the senators themselves should perform within a range of expenditure that does not put national finances in trouble. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that when you are a senator, you must simply become an industry that the state takes care of because that's precisely what it is at the moment. When you become a senator, you become, a, you become an industry that the federal government is supposed to account for. But a senator, a senator need not be as expensive as our senators are. We, are certainly, we certainly have a, a Senate that is more expensive than any other Senate, Senate in the world. Mr. Alfemun, there are people who are of the opinion, uh, there is school of thought of Nigeria does not need a full-time uh, legislator or lawmaker. Some people believe that we do not need bicameral legislature, we just need unicameral legislature. It's interesting that, that one of the lawmakers, one of the senior lawmakers because he's a senator, is saying all of us here are doing perhaps what one third of us can actually do. Is it a cut down or there is a, a total re-engineering of the process? There is a general disrespect for the process of government in the demands always made to reduce the legislature, either to some temporary or less, less buoyant uh, form than it has at the moment. If government behaves like government and there is a genuine developmental approach to the issues that are to the issues that tend to arise, what we have on the ground is just enough to carry the day. The truth, however, is that very little of a developmental nature is taking place. So there is a, a tendency for the boredom the bottom of inactivity to create for very many, legislator, many legislators a sense of inactivity. They don't feel that they are doing anything. If you have a serious government, oh, there are jobs to do in this country that can keep twice the number of those in the house so busy that they will be requiring assistance for various duties, researchers here and there. But our legislators, in my view, are not as involved in envisioning the future as they ought to do. 
Look, we talk about 13.2 million children on the streets of Nigeria. 13.2 million of, of children who ought to be at school. You have not heard of a legislator genuinely stressing and threshing out a basis for accommodating those people within the school system in a very short space of time. We can afford to do it. Nigeria has the means. And if we do not have the means, we should be discussing how to. Because those kids, whether we like it or not, we remain here. We are not wiping them out. And therefore, they must be accommodated within the scheme of financial arrangements and programming. If legislators are genuinely interested in how to save Nigeria's future, in each of the sectors of the economy, there's so much work to do that they won't even have the time to get around the way they are doing at the moment mm. because they are getting around quite often. Mr. Ofem, your late principal, uh, Chief of Afemi Awolo, was is perhaps referred to as a father of federalism. He, he, he wrote so much about federalism in Nigeria and how he thinks it should work. Yeah. Does our problem come back to the issue of structure? Every issue in the Nigerian in the Nigerian government is about structure. The restructuring that began from as early as 1900, the restructuring, the, the restructuring that took place in 1914, and over the years, the refusal to allow efforts at restructuring to either begin or proceed towards a, some, some genuine conclusion. If you take a look at the issue of what legislators do and what they don't do. Much of what they worry about at the moment really ought to belong to the states. But that is not happening. The more serious issues they ought to be concerned with are not being considered at all in Nigeria. We just mentioned the education. It is possible not only to put 15 million children back to school, it is important that all Nigerians under 50 should be re-educated. Those who do not have education can be brought into the scheme. The amount of work you need to do in Nigeria, consider, for instance, the possibility, oh, the, the Ghanaians are having factories per local government. Imagine a situation where in Nigeria you also need to embark on such a gangantuan scheme. Every local government having a productive function that requires bringing people off the streets. Look, you do serious development either by building farms or building factories. In Nigeria, the factories are closing down. The, the farms that we are trying to bring into, into the stream of pro production are in trouble largely because we have not evolved a determinate scheme for saving the farming population. In fact, these days we are almost preventing farmers from, from doing their work because of the violence across the system. And if you, if you have a legislature that is determined to deal with all these problems, not as a matter of you know, speech making, but as a matter of functional redistribution of power. What, what do you think it is the solution, Mr. Femo? I mean, because independence, I would actually wanted to ask you that, look, from independence 1962 now, what have we fed? And what is the solution to our problem? But let me, let me just summarize and ask you, what do you think is one and most important solution to fix, if there is one, anything like that, to fix a nagging problem? First, we must stop criminalizing our ethnic groups. It is number one way of dealing with the Nigerian issue. Stop criminalizing the ethnic group. All, Nigeria, all of Nigeria's nationalities should be genuinely free if we want Nigeria to be free. We must stop putting things in the way. Recently, a governor insisted that Fulanis who are not Nigerians will be accommodated within the Nigerian scheme, of of Nigerian scheme in the economy. But something just occurred to me. If we are so concerned about one ethnic group and their siblings across the African continent, just let's consider 
those within the, the, Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian economic firmament, what are we doing about them? I can give you one example that is a most troubling one. The Gwagi, the Gwari of Nigeria, are scattered between six different states. We have not managed to put them together. They are contiguous and therefore they ought to be in one state. We have not managed to deal with that. We are bringing in groups that are supposedly multinational in nature, who therefore must be accommodated within the Nigerian scheme, not of federalism, but of a pro-unitary system kind of, kind of arrangement. Now, our legislators are supposed to be concerned about the, the distance between the ideal of a federal setup and this kind of makeshift arrangement right. that ignores what we have on the ground and imposes a new, a new solution that is not a solution, but actually an explosion All right. of the issues. Mr. Odiofemo, I, I must sincerely thank you. I mean, some of deep thought that you're sharing with us there. 